Hi everyone, in this tutorial we'll discuss how we can use each of the tools in Robot Mesh Studio to build a 3D model. Specifically, we'll examine how to perform rotation, translation, and automatic positioning of library objects into the Mimic. Finally, we'll conclude by discussing how to start and stop a simulation within the Mimic Editor. So let's get started by adding some game objects from the miscellaneous library. You can see that I'm in the miscellaneous library, second from the bottom, and I have um, a bunch of things I can choose. I'm going to select this hex ball to get us started. So when I left click on the hex ball, it adds it to the center of the mimic. If I happen to have the hex ball selected and my rotation tool clicked, so you can see it's up here on my toolbar, I can change the rotation of this hex ball in three dimensions. Closely related to the rotation tool is the translation tool. And what the translation tool does is it allows us to change the position of this hex ball in three dimensions. So again, I can move this hex ball along my X, Y, or Z axes. And if I get really close, this was something that took me a while to find, there's actually a little hot spot that's in the center of the translation tool. And if I click on that little yellow hot spot, I can now move the hex ball freely along all three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. So that's just a little tip that I picked up along the way. Now, because rotation and translation are so commonly used, we can see in the next icon that they have been combined conveniently into the rotation and translation tool. And when I select that, I can now combine both of those functions in a single tool. So that's kind of handy to have. Let's talk a little bit about some of the smart game objects. Um, and we'll see an example of that here in the high rise game cube. So I'm going to click on that. The default positioning is not so advantageous. So I'm just going to pull this high rise cube out so we can take a look at it. Now, what we can see that makes this um, cube different from the hex ball is that there's actually a number of holes in it uh, for, insert, for inserting VEX elements, such as a connector pin. And if I click on the cube and select it, we now have a collection of snap points. If I select one of these snap points, I can now uh, freely translate or rotate the geometry here relative to that snap point. So unlike the hex cube, which just has a single point of origin, the uh, high rise cube has a bunch of snap points. And where this really shines is if I grab a connector pin from my library and choose this auto tool, which will allow me to auto position the placement of objects, which is really handy. In other words, AKA, it's gonna let me snap the connector pin to the holes in the cube. So I have my auto tool selected and I'm gonna grab this three by three pin so we can see it. Now, it might be a little difficult to see. Um, so I'm gonna place my first pin inside the uh, hole here and I'm gonna get much closer so we can see what's going on here. I'm gonna grab another three by three pin and you can see that it's only gonna allow me to place the pin inside one of the holes. If I try and place this pin anywhere other than the holes, like in the hex ball, or in the surface around the holes, it just won't happen. So here we have snapping. And related to that idea is I have a little widget that will allow me to uh, click on one of the snap points within my connector pin and resize the object. So there's a little minus sign that we can see here. Right now a three by three connector pin is as large as connector pins get in the Vexverse. So if I click on that minus sign actually shrinks the pin. And now we can see that my pin is noticeably smaller than the first one and it is stuck inside the cube. So let's just grab this by again clicking on the translation and rotation tool. Oops. And let's see what we can do here. Somewhere there's a pin way I can grab this. Let's find out. Perhaps not. Perhaps my pin here is stuck in the cube forever. So let's talk about yet another tool, the hide tool. So I'm going to actually hide this cube temporarily so I can pull this cube, uh, sorry, pull the connector pin out. So now when I unhide my, um, my cube, so let's click that, I now have my connector pin sticking out. So uh, well, now that we have a pretty good understanding of how the basic uh, tools uh, work for translation, rotation, and auto positioning, I can actually run a simulation. So if I click up here on the play button on the run button, 
the Mimics physics engine is going to kick into gear, and all of these objects are going to tumble into space, except for the connector pin for whatever bizarre reason. So let's remove my connector pin here by clicking on delete and try that again. Okay, and objects all fall, great. If I wanted to have some kind of work surface to catch these objects when I run the simulation, I could go back here into the miscellaneous library and choose a Vex IQ field. So I'll give that a click. And I will just pull the field down a little bit so that my, object, my objects now are floating above the field. So let's select out. You can see that these things are hovering in space. Now when I run my simulation, the objects fall, but they make contact with the field and they don't fall any further than um, the field. And the reason for that is the field is kinematic, meaning that um, certain game objects like the field are not affected by the Mimics physics engine. So again, if I hit stop, objects go back into space, hit play, objects fall, make contact with the field, and an interesting thing happens that while the simulation is running, I actually lose my toolbar up here. So I cannot edit uh, the simulation while the physics engine is running. If I want to change the position of any of these objects, I have to stop the mimic. And now I have the ability to play with positioning. In fact, if I place one of these objects such that it bisects another object, for example, the game field, when I run my simulation, so let's hit run, a collision is going to occur. So the physics engine is going to come online and it's going to cause this hex ball to fall and this game cube to pop up out of the game surface. Because in real life, the game cube cannot intersect the uh, Vex IQ field. So let's hit play. And we see that that's the case. The hex ball fell and the um, game cube gets uh, pops up. It comes out of the Vex IQ field because there's a collision that occurs between the field and the cube. So uh, obviously you can see that gaining a mastery of the tools will serve you well as you go on to build more complicated mimics. Spend some time now to play with the tools using the ready-made objects just as I have or if you want to go a step further to challenge yourself, try combining some of these VEX IQ elements to build a more complicated model. I'll see you in a future video where we'll go through a more complicated build.